big days. We're going to actually mm -hmm. take a live look at Artemis 1 from the Kennedy Space Center. It is obviously set to launch tomorrow morning. Yes. It is carrying the Orion spacecraft, and Artemis 1 will fly around the moon and back to Earth on a six-week test flight. Okay, so as we get ready to watch tomorrow, our chief meteorologist, Betsy Kling, is in Florida right now and has a live update for us. Good morning, Betsy. I know I got a chance to talk to you before you left Friday. You were very <laughs> excited and like, wait a minute, I've got to watch the weather. So how is it out there today? Well, I will tell you, the humidity is at a thousand percent. You know, I know this morning the humidity at dew points in the Cleveland area in the low 60s, about 61 degrees at the eight o'clock ob. Here at uh, Kennedy Space Center, our dew point is 76 degrees. The temperature is also 76 degrees. And when that happens, it's literally just saturated. So we have 100% humidity. There is no wind, so it is just very sticky. But none of that matters to that rocket because that rocket is primed and ready to go. The countdown is on here at Kennedy Space Center for the liftoff of this historic mission, Artemis 1, the dawn of the next generation of space travel for Americans. And I will tell you what, the astronaut class, Team Artemis, has already been walking around this morning, got to shake hands with Victor Glover, who stands a chance to be the first person of color to ever work uh, walk on the moon. That possibly coming as early as 2024. But none of that will happen without a successful test flight, and that's what Artemis 1 is all about. High atop that 322-foot-tall space launch system, and if you want to know how tall that is, that's almost as tall as the Hilton Building in downtown Cleveland. At the top of that is the Orion Space Capsule. That's the capsule that we have been following in Cleveland for four years now. It's the one that flew to Mansfield, was trucked up to Sandusky, and spent a few weeks inside the world's largest vacuum chamber inside Armstrong test facility there in the Sandusky area. So uh, they took it back to Mansfield, put it back on that incredible plane called the Guppy, flew it back down here, and that very capsule now rides at the top of the rocket. Just under that Orion space capsule is the service module, and it's the European service module is the official title of it, but that whole thing was started at NASA Glenn in Cleveland. They began uh, the design of it, the concept of it, and then uh, they transferred it off to some partners in Europe to continue the build, but NASA Glenn is in charge of the integration of that uh, service module to the Orion capsule. The service module does everything for the Orion capsule as it's going around the moon. It's propulsion, it's support systems, and tanks for fuel and whatnot, communications. It's also the power system for the Orion capsule. So a really important part of this entire mission. As this capsule goes up, just over 42 days after launch, it will be coming back faster than any capsule has before, human rated capsule, 25,000 miles per hour, producing 5,000 degree heat at the bottom of it as it's coming through the atmosphere. The heat shield on the Orion capsule is gonna get the big test and there's no way they can simulate those conditions here on Earth. So it's truly a one of a kind, one time only test. And all fingers are crossed that they'll have splashdown sometime. Uh, I think October 10th is the splashdown date just off of San Diego. Guys. I can tell how excited you are, Betsy, <laughs> just by uh, your enthusiasm and conversation about this. I know you have also been looking forward to this for some time, but my curiosity mm. too, and what um, I'm hoping you can tell the folks at home that are watching this, is they have to make a decision as to flight or no flight mm. and what that time yeah. frame is beforehand. And obviously the conditions are more yeah. than just rain. So kind of nail that down for us. Oh, it's incredible. There's more going against it than for it, typically. The for category says perfect weather. And then the list of don't launch is huge as far as the weather goes. Charlie Blackwell Thompson is the first female launch director. She will be calling for go or no go tomorrow morning. And the, she'll do a poll. It's kind of a historic deal. Uh, so she'll go, you know, go or no go, and somebody will answer all the different engineers. They're also looking at the weather. The 45th Weather Squadron of the U.S. Space Force is in charge of the actual launch forecast. So they're counting down. They have been doing daily updates. And as of right now, fingers crossed, they're gonna uh, be able to launch tomorrow morning. It's all about temperature aloft 
and where the clouds are aloft. We have some clouds today. They're at about 12,000 feet or so from some of the OBS I've been looking at. Tampa has a weather balloon that went up and found the freezing level at 15,000 feet. So we would be able to launch today even though we have all these clouds, but there's way more factors that are involved in it and hopefully everything will come together. It's really a tough call because it's not just here at the launch pad. They're also forecasting a weather downrange out over the Atlantic Ocean. All of this sounds so amazing <laughs> and so interesting and I love your excitement and people can even see more of this mm -hmm. after the launch. Fingers crossed that yes, it launches yes, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, tomorrow. So tell us a little bit more about the special you have. Well, we'll have more tonight at 6 and 11 on what you can expect. We'll give you the latest on the weather. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be live with weather and then also uh, at one of Cleveland's own, who is the head of this Artemis Systems Development. Then tomorrow evening, 7.30, inside Artemis. We will take you inside this historic mission, show you some of the people behind it and some of the really incredible science and engineering feats that are going to be launching hopefully tomorrow morning. Well, fingers crossed for launch. Fingers crossed you get to see it all tomorrow <laughs> morning. I can't wait to see that. Uh, I hope someone else is having a camera on you, too, because yes. I think that would be very neat to see. <laughs> but thank you so very much uh, from the Sunshine yep. State all the way back up to the Buckeye State. We appreciate you this morning, Bets. You have a full schedule. Get some rest, Betsy. We're depending on you. Yeah. <laughs> We're camping outside tonight to wait for the launch. That's <laughs> what we have to do. So it's all good. We're fine. All right. We'll see you later this evening. Thank you, Betsy.